Hello, I'm Dr. Richard Martin, a family medicine physician at Geisinger. I'd like to spend a few minutes with you today discussing the significance, recognition, and initial treatment of urinary tract infections. Urinary tract infections are one of the most common reasons for visits to the emergency room, and if not treated aggressively, one of the, the leading causes of admissions to acute care hospitals for sepsis. There are several signs and symptoms that if recognized and treated early, can and should be effectively managed in the primary care office. In general, there are three significant criteria necessary to diagnose a urinary tract infection. Number one, evidence of pyuria. Number two, evidence of significant bacteria. Number three, symptoms consistent with a urinary tract infection, especially burning, frequency, and urgency. However, in the elderly, mental status changes such as confusion, untoward behaviors, generalized weakness, or lassitude may be the only presenting symptoms. It should be noted that in healthy young women without any symptoms of vaginitis or an uncomplicated urinary tract infection can be treated without lab studies. Office access needs to be provided as soon as the symptoms are reported. It is important to differentiate patients with asymptomatic bacteriuria who should not be treated with antimicrobial therapy unless they are pregnant or about to go undergo an invasive urologic procedure. Patients with asymptomatic bacteriuria who are about to undergo a non-urologic surgical procedure, such as orthopedic or cardiothoracic, will not benefit from treatment. It is also important to differentiate between cystitis and pyelonephritis, the latter of which is typically accompanied by fever, significant leukocytosis, or other markers of systemic infection. People with uncomplicated cystitis typically will not have significant fever or leukocytosis. Another significant consideration in patients with symptoms of a urinary tract infection is to always consider the risk of sexually transmitted diseases as well as candida cystitis, which generally does not require treatment. Treatment considerations are as follows. For uncomplicated acute cystitis, initial therapy, unless sulfa allergic, is trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, or Bactrim, 160, 800 milligrams, twice daily for three days. For sulfa allergic patients, cephalexin, 250 milligrams every six hours, or 500 milligrams every 12 hours for seven days is adequate. Other options are nitrofurantoin or macrobid, 100 milligrams by mouth, twice daily for five days. And lastly, ciprofloxacin, 250 milligrams by mouth, twice daily, to be reserved only when other antimicrobials cannot be used due to emerging resistance. For uncomplicated pyelonephritis, initial therapy should consist of ciprofloxacin, 500 milligrams by mouth, twice daily for at least seven days. Trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, Bactrim, 160-800 milligrams by mouth, twice daily for 14 days is an alternative. However, this should be reserved if there has been treatment for a urinary tract infection during the last three months due to the possibility of emerging resistance. If trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole susceptibility is unknown, then an initial IV or IM dose of ceftriaxone, one gram, or a consolidated 24-hour dose of an aminoglycoside may be considered. Another option may be amoxicillin, 500 to 875 milligrams twice daily for 14 days, particularly for suspected gram-positive organisms or where beta-lactam susceptibility is unknown, initial IV or IM dose of ceftriaxone one gram or consolidated 24-hour dose of aminoglycoside may be considered. In the case of complicated cystitis, recurrent or resistant, ciprofloxacin 500 milligrams by mouth twice daily for five to 10 days may be used, or ceftriaxone one gram intravenously daily for five to 10 days, or two grams daily for patients weighing greater than 120 kilograms, or genomycin, seven milligrams per kilogram IV daily divided appropriately for five to 10 days. 
Complicated pyelonephritis should be treated with intravenous antibiotics. Initially, ciprofloxacin, 400 milligrams IV every 12 hours for five to 14 days, or ceftriaxone, one gram IV daily for five to 14 days, two grams daily for patients greater than 120 kilograms, or cefepime, one gram IV every six hours for five to 14 days, particularly for patients who are at risk for Pseudomonas aeruginosa infections, or piperacillin tazobactam, 3.375 grams IV every eight hours for five to 14 days for severe pyelonephritis, sepsis, and patients with or at risk for Pseudomonas infections. Lastly, regarding catheter-related urinary tract infections, First, the catheter should be removed whenever possible. If the catheter is still necessary, but has not been changed for 14 days, it needs to be changed, and a new urine culture should be obtained from the new catheter, not the old one. Once again, treatment regimens include ciprofloxacin, 500 milligrams by mouth, twice daily for five days, and trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, 160, 800 milligrams, twice daily, by mouth for five to seven days. This should be reserved in communities with greater than 20% resistance to trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole or if used within the last three months. Or ceftriaxone one gram IV daily for seven days or cefepime one gram IV every six hours for seven days, particularly if pseudomonas, severe pyelonephritis, or complicated catheter-associated cystitis is suspected, or piperacillin tazobactam, 3.375 grams IV every eight hours for seven days, once again reserved for severe complicated pyelonephritis, sepsis, or patients who are noted to be at risk for pseudomonas. Although some of these recommendations may be appropriate for institutional settings, such as a nursing home, it is generally recognized that if patients or other caregivers recognize symptoms and get them treated quickly and aggressively, that visits to the emergency department or acute inpatient admissions can be avoided. Follow-up should be arranged depending on the patient's social needs as well as medical comorbidities. Young, healthy individuals may require only a telephone follow-up. Most other patients should at least have a telephonic follow-up for one to two days until their symptoms are resolving. Frail, elderly, complex patients may be referred to a case manager for further follow-up and ongoing care. Repeat your analysis and or cultures to ascertain cure should be at the discretion of the treating physician and based on the patient's frailty or history of recurrence. We owe it to our patients to keep them healthier and manage their urinary tract infections more effectively. Thank you for listening.